We are honored to have with us today Andrew John Gett, our resource person for the day. Over 26 years ago, Mr. Getz founded the Eurasia Institute for International Education in Berlin, Germany. The institution has helped over 20,000 students realize their study and career goals in Europe. We now request our administrator, Mr. Rishikesh Singh, to present a small token of appreciation for Mr. Andrew on behalf of DPS Ruby Park. We are indeed privileged to have you amongst us today, sir. respected faculty, dear parents and students of Delhi Public School, Ruby Park. I welcome you here to this very interactive session where we are going to help you see your pathway towards higher education. You are standing at a very crucial point of your life, right? Some of you are in humanities stream, some in commerce, some in science. And maybe you're still deliberating what you want to do for your bachelor's degree. Some of you are still not focused or you have not realized which stream would get you that successful career or which course of study would bring you the satisfaction and happiness that you want to see in your life down the years. So we are here to give you some options. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Antara Adhikari. I have visited your school earlier also. I'm from Futura campus and our office is located at Everest House. We help students with career counseling and with university placements by foundation, pathway program, language training and uh, through university placements in countries abroad. Okay? So if any of you have thought about overseas education, you will get a very good insight about all the various factors that can come into play. Can any of you name a few factors which might decide which country you want to select if you want to go abroad? Has anyone ever traveled abroad? Any of you? Yes, raise your hand. Okay. Which country have you been to? To Singapore, all right? And to Indonesia. Indonesia. And has anyone been to Europe? Yes? To which countries? Switzerland, France, and Italy. To Switzerland, France, and Italy. Okay. So, can you share just in one sentence what your experience was like when you were abroad? Okay, she says it was really nice. Can I re reframe it as, it was a nice cultural exposure? Yes, it was a cultural exposure. So what other things can come into your mind when you go for, uh, you know, when you plan for your education abroad, other than cultural exposure? Yes? Yes, university programs. Which countries offer best opportunities in their study programs and which eventually lead to best job opportunities or research based opportunities. So today we are going to discuss what opportunities you can have in Europe. Okay? And with that, I would hand over uh, the microphone to Mr. Andrew Geddes. He is the founder director of Eurasia Institute for International Education, which is a part of a, a CLED group. And uh, over the past 25 years, 
more than 20,000 international students have been placed in universities in Europe, in Germany and other parts of Europe. So we are very privileged that he's here today and he's going to share all the insights about education abroad. To you, sir. Thank you, Antara. And uh, thank you, everybody, for taking time to come and listen. Um, what we're going to talk about today is could be a life changer for some of you young people. And I'm glad that the parents are here, too. Um, I'm really glad to be in India today, um, although I didn't arrive till 4 o'clock in the morning, so I'm pretty tired. <laughs> Uh, so sorry, I try not to fall asleep. <laughs> okay, you're going to keep me awake by asking lots of questions. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is some of the opportunities in Germany. Now, why would anybody want to study in Germany? We have a great school system here and great education here. Good opportunities, career opportunities. What does Germany offer you? Um, hey, my presentation has fallen asleep. I was just going to show you some. Okay. So, uh, Anko Gupta is one of our students from India. He says, uh, Eurasia took care of me from the beginning until the end, from accommodation to jobs. After my German course, they helped me getting a job at Nokia, which boosted my skills and opened my mind. Now, uh, everybody knows Nokia, right? Nobody uses their telephones anymore. Um, it's not a German company. It's uh, anybody know where Nokia comes from? Sweden? Finland, yeah. Finland. So Finnish, Finnish is finished as far as telephones are concerned. Nobody uses them anymore. But uh, Nokia is still a big company. They're doing different things now. And uh, as far as infrastructure is cool. Um, I'm from uh, the UK originally, uh, but I chose also to come and live in Germany 26 years ago. For personal reasons I won't go into right now, um, but I've come to appreciate Germany as being uh, a country where you can have a very quiet life. Everybody leaves you alone, you, know, you can do your own thing. But there is no limitations to what you can do or what you can achieve there. Um, especially as far as being international is concerned. And um, right now about 20% of the population in Germany is actually non-German. Okay, so uh, in Berlin we have about three and a half million people. And about 20% of those are from all over the world, so you can imagine what kind of a creative uh, international atmosphere that is. Everybody knows uh, Tesla, right? Okay. We all know the German uh, automobiles, BMW or Mercedes. Who likes to drive German cars? Anybody here? Nobody? Who would like to drive a Tesla? Yeah, okay, so Tesla's modern. Guess where Tesla has just decided to open their new factory? Germany. In Germany, yeah. In Berlin, okay. And uh, they're going to set up a new design and engineering center right in the center of Berlin. And guess, guess what they are looking for? Guess? Engineers, okay. So 10,000 engineers are needed in Berlin. Uh, they are hoping to produce, uh, to finish building the factory and the center within about two years. So two years from now, we could use like 10,000 uh, masters graduates in automobile technology or automation or uh, robotics or mechatronics. Okay, these are 50% of the students from India who come to study in Germany. They are doing a master's in some of these engineering fields, okay? As far as uh, school kids like yourselves are concerned, after completing the school in India, you need to do a uh, pre-engineering foundation year, and then you do a three years 
engineering degree. Okay, and even after doing these three-year bachelor's degree, um, German industry, whether it's Tesla or whether it's BMW or Mercedes or Porsche or uh, Volkswagen, they are all looking for engineers. If you go onto one of the job portals in Germany on the internet, you can do it from here. I can send you the link if you like. Um, you will find for any of the professions that I mentioned, between 10,000 and 50,000 jobs which are going right now on the market and which can't be filled. Um, Germany government has for the last few years been following a policy of trying to attract foreign students to come to Germany to study and to work in Germany. Uh, because you know that the birth rate in Germany is uh, going down for decades now, so the population is actually decreasing while the economy is growing. So um, it's not working out anymore. So we are we need foreign students to come to Germany, and uh, this is actually a phenomenon in the whole of Europe. So that's the chance that I'm talking about today. The chance is for you to look into an alternative future, um, or maybe into a double future, uh, because India is going to be a big producer of automobiles in the future as well. So it's all about uh, sharing technology, sharing know-how, and maybe coming back five years, six years later, and bringing some of that technology back to India. Okay. So there's uh, some of the opportunities for engineers. Um, just matter of interest, who is interested in being an engineer in the future? Anybody? Show of hands. Nobody. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now slowly. I don't see anybody who's really committed because none of you went, yeah, that's me. It was all, yeah, maybe. Okay, so who wants to be an engineer? Let's try again. That's me. Okay, okay about half of you. Uh, what about the rest of you? <clears throat> you want to be a doctor? Okay, that sounds like you got. Let's show of hands who wants to be a doctor. Okay, so half of you are engineers, half of you are doctors. Anybody else want to be something else? Research. What do you want to research? Astrophysics. Physics. Okay. Astrophysics. Astrophysics. Okay, what what do you do in astrophysical research? What what is the vision? Right now radio astronomy is huh? Right now radio astronomy is uh, uh, driving Okay, so that's that's all about um, I'm not an astrophysician, so I can't tell you what it's all about. You're going to tell us what it's all about. And your vision is to be what? What do, what do you want to achieve by being an astrophysicist? I don't want to be an astrophysicist. I like physics. And I want to pursue physics. As okay, but why? Because I uh, think research right now needs both combination of physics, chemistry, and biology. <laughs> and I want to use all three of them. Okay. Okay, so I'm asking a, a difficult question. You can't sit down, I'm not going to bore anymore. Um, it's quite difficult for everybody uh, at your age. To know what exactly you're going to be doing in life, but it's even more difficult maybe to know why you want to do that particular thing or what you want to achieve by doing a particular job. Um, and 
I don't want any update. So, um, as your um, head teacher said just now, we've helped 20,000 students over the last 25 years to find their true profession and to study the right program to get to that true pro profession. One of the most important things before you decide um, to do something new after leaving school is to ask yourself, okay, what do I want to be doing from uh, five years from now in the future, okay? If you have that kind of a plan, then you will know roughly what's going to happen in the next five years and how, what you need to do in order to get there, to be successful. Um, there's one simple tool which we are using uh, for all of our students. It's called the Harrison Assessment. And the Harrison Assessment has been used also over the last 25 years in thousands of international companies uh, for over a million people to help them find their career where they will have the highest level of success and enjoyment, okay? If you don't like what you're doing, then it's a kind of downward spiral. If you don't enjoy something, you get worse at it. But if you enjoy something, then you get better and better. And the better you do your job, the more pleased your boss with, uh, is with you, and you get praise from your boss, and then you get more motivated, and you get even better. And then you do more research, and you get even better and even better. So in order to find out what each of you, for each of you, the um, kind of perfect solution for your future career would be, we have developed the so-called Smart Genius Success Formula. And the first part of this formula is the scientific career analysis, okay? It's a short online questionnaire. It takes about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how quick you are. Um, and at the end of this, this generates a 20-page report, okay? The first thing is about your greatest strengths, okay? Because your eligibility for any career is always based on your greatest strengths, okay? This is what the beginning of the report looks like. So based on these greatest strengths, the next step is to find out which career options you would have, okay? Now in this database, there is a um, huge amount of careers, uh, about 670 different careers, which um, they're not dependent on any particular language or country or culture. You can do these anywhere in the world. And the database stores all the information, okay, about what it takes to be successful in this particular career. And by, through doing this short questionnaire, you can find out, okay, am I gonna be eligible for this career? Um, don't worry if the report says no, you're not, because that's why you study, okay? That's why you go to university, that's why, you, that's the place where you learn hard skills, but also soft skills. And, the third report, after you've had a look at the career options generated, each of the career options will give you a percentage score, which says <clears throat> how likely are you to enjoy and be successful in this particular career. So you can basically go through the, the top list Okay, all the careers which have above 80%, they're likely to be pretty 
uh, pretty suitable for your own personal interests, personal skills, and your greatest strengths. Okay, then we come to the third section of the port report, which is the career development. Okay, and this is where it tells you what are the things that you need to work on in order to excel at this particular career. And the final, the final one goes through all the separate skills and gives you an exact score on how likely you are to succeed, okay? So for example, if you want to be a engineer, one of the questions will be whether you like working with maths. Okay, if you hate maths but you want to be an engineer, it's not going to really work out. Okay, uh, that was just a simple example, but it goes quite deep into the human psychology as well. Okay. So this is a really powerful test which can not just save you um, time and money, uh, especially time, because in, in my case, for example, if I had done this test um, 30 plus years ago, when I was at school, I might have done something differently when I went to university, okay? Because it gives you a very focused idea on what could be your vision of your future you and how to get there, okay? And when I went to school, this kind of thing was not very highly developed. I mean, this test has been going for 25 years. I left school more than 30 years ago, okay? So I would have been happy to have a kind of test like this. Okay, so these days, a lot of people are doing research in psychology, yeah? That's why research is very important. Not everybody can... Um, build bridges and cars. Some people need to research how to do it. Uh, and this is all about human research and psychology. So this is really a great thing which can save you a lot of time and maybe um, be a kind of speedy highway for you to get to your best version of you, okay, which is what we all want to do in our career, right? <coughs> so that's the report, and that's step one of the success formula. So based on the results of this report, we then take our students through the next step, which is the career-oriented academic placement, okay? And that's where we look at the different options. Okay, maybe based on what you want to do in life, maybe you don't need to study abroad at all. Okay, that's option one. Uh, <clears throat> if you do want to study abroad, then there are many, many different factors uh, which you need to look at. There's your financial plan. Um, <clears throat> there's the ranking of the universities in the different countries, okay? Career chances in the different countries. Um, as far as Germany is concerned, um, <clears throat> concentrating mainly on Germany because that's where our institute is based. Um, and as far as Germany is concerned, I have some water. <coughs> Germany offers Germany offers huge career chances, but at the same time, uh, it offers some very attractive budgets for students. Okay, does anybody know why? <clears throat> so it, it's no longer a best kept secret, I don't think. Uh, everybody knows that studying in Germany is free of charge, okay, even for international students. Okay. Are you aware? Yes. 
so everybody knows that. Um, obviously, living in Germany is not free of charge, but I don't know any of our students who didn't manage to find a job as a student. Okay? So, in order to live in Germany as a student, you need a budget of about how many rupees? One, one lakh per month? One lakh rupees per month. For one month. Uh, so 60,000 rupees is enough to live in Germany for one month. Okay. Does that sound like a lot of money? A lot of money, okay. So, uh, okay, let's see what do you earn in one hour in Germany? What do you think? Any, any guesses? 10, 10 euros is kind of minimum wage, okay? The minimum wage is uh, eight, 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 eight hundred rupees. <coughs> okay. Okay. In one hour. So eight hundred rupees in one hour. Who's good at maths? How many hours do you need to work to live for one month? Twenty, 20 hours a week. Okay. And what does the German government allow students to work per week? 20 hours, okay. So, the German work government wants students to come and study, and in their spare time also study, but at the weekends you can work 16 hours, and maybe in the evenings you can do the other four hours, okay. So, you end up having 20 hours a week, that's 20 times 800, times 27 working days, end up having a bit more than you need to live in Germany, okay? So, um, living in Germany, you could say, more or less pays for itself, okay? Now, what do you have at the end, okay? Um, at the end, you have, as a bachelor's graduate, there is a minimum wage of, let's say, between uh, 30,000, 25 to 30,000 euros uh, per annum. Okay, so that's 24 lakhs. My, my human calculator. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> you're investing uh, you're investing what in your education? Zero. Okay? And you're getting after bachelor's? How many lakhs? 24 lakhs. So that sounds like a good return on investment. Huh? Anybody want to study business in Germany? Nobody? Yeah. Okay, so you know about ROI, huh? Does that sound like a good ROI? Invest nothing and get 24 lakhs every year. Okay. So that sounds a bit too good to be true, right? Who thinks it sounds too good to be true? Okay, only two people, so. Uh, well, it is true. Um, but it's not 100% true, okay? Because there is nothing like this on the earth where you do nothing and get lots back. Yeah? You always have to do something. So what do you think you have to do here? Any ideas? You have to study, okay? You have to work hard. Uh, you're investing your brain power. What else are you investing? Huh? Time. Time. Okay, you're investing time. You're investing time where you could be living happily with your family in India. And whatever you do in India, you have to spend time in Germany. And in Germany, the winters are not like this here. 
here it's nice, 30 degrees, and back home uh, it's zero degrees. You know what zero degrees feels like? Yeah. Anybody ever felt zero degrees? <laughs> okay. okay, so you have to spend time getting used to a new environment. Okay. That might cost you some uh, emotional energy. Okay. Living in a new country, surrounded by new people, eating food you don't like, maybe, uh, missing your spices, missing your family, all of these things cost energy, emotional energy, okay, and physical energy. So you're investing time and energy, um, brain power. What else do you need to do? One need to learn German language. You need to learn German language, yeah. Um, this is the most common thing which people ask me. Uh, can I study in English in Germany? And uh, the answer is yes, you can. But... <laughs> So I will tell you a couple of stories. Um, one of the employees of my company, he also came to Germany 20 years ago and studied at university in English language. Okay? Um, he did MBA. And in his class, there were 20 students from different countries. And he was from Pakistan, um, our brother country. <laughs> and he was the only student who managed to find a job in Germany because he studied in English. Uh, all of his class studied in English. And um, all of his class had to do an internship. And everybody in his class found an internship uh, either back home in Thailand or China or Taiwan, or they found a job in a German company where they said, okay, it's okay if you speak English because our staff also speak English. Um, and the guy who came to our company, I said, yes, you can do an internship for three months. Um, if you do an internship for three months, I will give you for free a German language class. Okay? So I didn't pay him wages, but I gave him a skill. Okay? And with this skill, he was able to convince me that he would be a valuable member of my team. So after I gave him the internship, he said, can I have a job? And I said, okay, uh, if you finish learning German to B2 level, then you'll be on a level for professional German, okay? Then you can speak to everybody I need you to speak to for me, okay? then you'll be a useful member of my team. So, uh, actually, it wasn't the Prime Minister of Pakistan, but his name was Imran Khan. <laughs> and he's still working for me, and now he's my top sales guy. Okay? All of his classmates, they are back home, okay? because none of them learn German. And this is the story I always tell people who ask me, can I study in English in Germany? The answer is yes, but not if you want to have a career in Germany, because um, if you study in German language, you have uh, three years of bachelor plus two years of master. You have five years. Uh, the first year is difficult. Uh, 
even I studied at a German university, although I was uh, from the UK. And the first year I was studying business and economics, every second word I had to look it up in the dictionary. Okay? But after two years, I could talk the same way as the German businessmen were talking. Okay? I know all the German vocabulary. And that's the main bonus of studying in German language is that you are fit and ready to begin your career when you graduate. Um, some people study in English and then they have 18 months to find employment. Okay? And then they spend 18 months trying to learn German language and find that they are not getting job offers. Okay? So my advice to everybody is to learn German first and during your academic studies you will deepen your knowledge of the German language, of the German vocabulary, that especially the technical and scientific vocabulary. And then you will be fit for your career. And almost any industry in Germany now, from a roof builder, nurse, from doctor to zoologist, architect to mechatronics engineer, everybody is looking for these people now, qualified staff. So you can study almost anything and be pretty sure that at the end you will get a job, okay? And as I said, the minimum wage for specialized people in Germany starts at around 30,000. The more experience you have, it doesn't take more than 10 years before you're earning about 100,000 euros a year, okay? So especially in the IT field, or if you can combine IT and engineering, okay, because the next generation of cars is going to be self-driving, uh, solar-powered cars. Um, so these kinds of skills are the ones you need to get really well-paid jobs in Germany. And do that for five or ten years and then come home. Maybe. No. So this is just one alternative vision for your future. Um, how many of you will finish school next year? Anybody? How many will finish the year after next? Okay, so either or. Um, And how many of you have thought about studying abroad? About a third, maybe, or a half. Okay. And who thinks Canada is the best place to study? Well, uh, what about Germany? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. And who thinks the UK would be a good place to study? Okay. So who's, who's interested in building uh, Formula One cars? Nobody. Oh, one, two, three. So you guys should come and talk to us again. We have a good contact with the University of Bolton in near Manchester, where I come from. And they have a F1 racing track on their campus, okay? And a, a, a studio where you can build the cars on campus and do research on that. So that sounds pretty cool for someone who wants to do that. Um, as I said at the beginning, we've been going for 25 years and we are not just based in Germany, okay? Uh, <coughs> our office in Calcutta we set up two years ago uh, because at the moment there are so many students from India uh, considering studying abroad and going abroad to study uh, that we thought it was time 
to open an office here and interact directly with the students and with your parents uh, and give you the best possible support in making this important decision, okay? And as I said at the beginning, it begins with your career enjoyment analysis, okay? What am I going to excel at in my life? That's going to be what I'm going to do best and what I'm going to enjoy the most, okay? What I enjoy, I do well, okay? And some of you may think that you need to become a doctor because your dad was a doctor, your granddad was a doctor, and your great-granddad was a doctor too. And if I don't become a doctor, I'm going to break that family tradition. Okay? I don't want to annoy any dads or moms by saying this, but it might not be what you want to really do in your life. And at least doing this report will give you an alternative vision, will give your parents an alternative uh, vision, what you might be most successful at in your life. Okay? And I'm a dad too. I wouldn't want my son to run my company if he didn't have a passion for languages, for travel, for other cultures, and for helping people in their careers. But if he says, oh dad, that's just what I want to do, then I would say, sure, I'm gonna do what I'm doing. Um, but if he says, I want to build cars, then I would say, go build cars. Because that, if that's what will make you happy and productive and successful in your life, then that's what I want for you. Okay. And I think most parents think that way as well. Um, and as I said at the beginning, it would have helped me when I was your age to have this kind of a test, um, black on white, yeah, so I can read it and see, okay, these are my options. This is what I need to do in order to get to these options. And if you want, there is some helpful people to support me to make these choices and not just make them, but also uh, take the steps to get there and be successful. Okay, so how are we doing for time? I think we have time for some questions. Um, Android. Engineering. I mean, if somebody wants to go for engineering, for if it's an IIT rank here, does it uh, exempt from the pre-engineering course in Germany? Is it like that? Something like that? Um, if the child has an IIT score here, does it uh, he or she can do away with the uh, prelim uh, first one or two years before joining engineering college? So um, generally, there is. Uh, for Indian students, there is an exam which needs to be passed. It, it is possible to do the exam, it's called the FSP, without doing the one-year preparation course. Yeah. And uh, I know that some people have passed the exam without doing that course. So I guess it's a case-by-case -case decision. Um, and also universities, in Germany, they are sovereign, so they can decide whether they want to admit a student or not. Um, but they do it also on a case by case basis. Passing B two because my daughter has passed B one. Is is it B two is essential for studying? In order to be uh, admitted to yeah. a, a German taught university yeah. program. You must have either test staff okay. or DSH or help C1. C1. Yeah. Okay. So those are the levels required. Any other questions? Do all the universities take uh, undergraduates like Gottingen? 
is there any provision for undergraduate studies at uh, universities like Gottingen? Yeah, all, all of the universities have undergraduate and postgraduate. Yeah, so there's there's direct admission uh, facility for for the university. I mean, at the university. Well, each each university has its own affiliated foundation course. Okay, so if somebody is not um, accepted directly for the undergrad program and they need to do the one year foundation course, then what happens is that they will get uh, conditional admission from the university and the conditional the condition will be that they pass the language exam and that they also pass the FST after one year um, but you're not actually losing any time in this process because in India the bachelor's degrees take four years and in Germany they take three years so the the pre-engineering course is like doing another year at school basically What's the full form of uh, FSP? FSP. Yeah. Uh, uh, Feststellungsprüfung. Okay. A nice long German word. <laughs> Thank you. So is it the same for the postgraduate? Suppose uh, one, one who has done BTEC here and going for the postgraduate students from the engineering. So uh, if you've done your bachelor's in India, uh, usually a um, four year bachelor's uh, qualify you directly for the master's. You usually need to have a grade which is better than 70%. Any more questions? Sir, uh, where can I give the FSP exam? In Germany. Uh, the FSP exams, uh, for example, in Berlin, we have a cooperation with the TU Berlin, which is one of the top nine engineering universities in Germany. And they have uh, an FSP twice a year. Okay, so you can do it there as an external student, or you can do the uh, TU Berlin Foundation year, and at the end you do it as a program. So I have to go to Berlin to give the exam. Sorry? Yes, I'm sorry. So I have to go to Berlin to give the exam. Yeah. Okay, I'll just explain it in simple words. After your class 12 results, you have three choices, most of you. Some of you want to go for medical, some in engineering, others in management or humanities. So there are three foundation programs that you have to go for mandatorily in order to get into a university. So we have the renowned university TU Berlin. You can look it up. Okay. TU Berlin has foundation programs for engineering and management. It's called the T course or the W course for management. We also have Charité, which is the medical foundation school under TU Berlin. So if any of you are interested to get more information how you can go for the free education programs in Germany, you have to be eligible for the student colleagues, that is the foundation programs okay so uh, we will contact each of you as uh, you have written your email IDs and the phone numbers in the inquiry forms I believe and we'll give you a little more information but for starters if you want to plan your career in medical please ensure that you have above 90% in overall and at least 95 in the biosciences. Okay? Any aspirants for medical over here? Raise your hands. Okay? So you'll remember about 90% and at least 95 in your biosciences. If you are planning for your engineering, then at least 75% to be eligible. Okay? And if you want to go for your management courses, then at least 70%. Is that clear? Alright, I think that's pretty achievable for uh, students of DPS because we know you're good students and in Germany you can survive only if you are academically strong and you are a self-motivated student. Alright, there will be no one to spoon feed you, not your parents, not your teacher. You have to motivate yourself to learn things, to get things done by yourself. And that's pretty much the same for overseas education in any country that you want to go to. 
okay? You can't run to the corridor and ask your teacher, ma'am, please solve this problem for me. Once you're abroad, you have to take an appointment with your professor in order to solve the problem, okay? So, you have to be very self-motivated and we'll help you with the career counseling process. We are, uh, we are located at Everest House. Uh, we request parents and students, in case you have any inquiries, please feel free to get in touch with Anuradha ma'am. Um, she will uh, coordinate with us. She will give us your phone number and we'll help you with the counseling or the Harrison assessment as um, Sir has mentioned today. And uh, if you can just make a note, the address is here of our Kolkata office. It's right over there. Yes? You all can find the assessment in the website. Okay, you just have to find out Harrison assessment, but yes. The, the assessment, uh, you get a personal link. We need your email and your name, and then you get the link. Yeah. Um, and then you can do the test. If you actually want to see the full report, uh, unfortunately, it's not free of charge. Okay, so that's what career counseling comes to this. Okay, you can take a test, but the report needs to be briefed to you. You need a counselor who will analyze your psychometric assessment and tell you where your strengths lie. What are your career options? Do you understand? Yes? Okay, so you can take the test, but you need somebody uh, who can guide you through the process. Alright? So, uh, I would urge everybody to go for the Harrison assessment. You can do it in our office also. We have um, uh, experienced counsellors who will do the debriefing so that you don't have to follow the herd. Okay? If you don't want to be an engineer, if you don't want to be a doctor, if you want to be an artist, if you want to be in media, you, can, you might as well do that. Okay? Don't follow the herd. Try to understand what your career options are. Go according to your interests and, uh, you know, according to your happiness. You should be happy about what you do in life. That's very important. Okay? And other than that, um, we counsel students for all countries. Okay? US, UK, Europe, Australia, Canada, you name it, we have it. But, you also need to plan your finances for the same. I'll just give a, a small brief about uh, your financial budget that you're looking at. If you're planning a bachelor's degree in the US, Canada, UK, Australia, anywhere in the world, you are uh, easily looking at spending 90 lakhs to 1 crore in 4 years. Is that clear? How much? 90 lakhs to 1 crore. Even if you get a scholarship, it will be at least 75 to 80 lakhs. Is that clear? Okay? So if you are planning in US, Canada, Australia, this is the budget that you are looking at. And why are we proposing about Germany today? Because it's free education. There are no tuition fees that's charged. Okay? All you have to do is learn a language. And in today's context, it's important to be multilingual. Knowledge of a foreign language will definitely be an edge for your career. Be it French, Spanish, Japanese or German, these are main languages, right? So, it is important to learn the language. If you learn the language through the pathway program and go for the foundation courses, be rest assured that you get 100% internship opportunities when you are in your college you get 100% job placements. Okay? So that's your success strategy. Learn the language, go for the foundation, and start your career in Germany. Do you have any other questions? Do you have an integrated five-year program for physics? Like so in India, we have integrated MSc, master degree. Master degree for five years. Physics. Uh, we are not a university, but 
TU Berlin, for example, has a three-year bachelor's degree and a two-year master's degree. In, in Europe, we have a unified system of bachelor's and master's, and it's always three years plus two years of the master's. Okay, so basically, yes, it's a, a five-year program to get to master's level. Any more questions? Students or parents? Please submit the forms as Anuradha ma'am is there. All of you submit the forms. Yes, yes, please do click the budget, yes. If you have any other questions, you can stay back. We can have some interaction with the parents. And students, thank you so much for being here with us. Good afternoon and thank you. I'll see you soon at our office for some counseling session.